please, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is Bruce, G4ABX. Yesterday, I built myself a new rig, uh, a QCX Mini. Amazing little piece of kit. And I'm not going to take you through the whole build process because there are many videos on YouTube that show you how to do and what to do. But I thought I might explain a few of the things that um, tripped me up because it didn't work for switch on. I had to do a bit of uh, reparation. And having now got it all working perfectly well, um, a small modification, a small addition to improve the overall usability of the uh, wonderful little transceiver. Uh, it, it is really quite amazing. I'm <laughs> quite smitten with it, uh, which is the main reason that uh, I'm, I'm actually doing this. So um, let's, just have a, let's just have a quick look at the beastie. All right, so <clears throat> here we have the, uh, the little QCX Mini. Um, it's, it's tiny. I mean, it really is tiny. <laughs> um, it's lightweight. This is a 40 meter version. And um, I'm just going to uh, connect a, a little speaker, an amplified speaker to it, so you can hear what's going on. And uh, just uh, excuse me a moment. Okay, so that's got the speaker, that's got the speaker connected. And what's quite amazing is that um, not only is the CW reception really good, it's a very sensitive little piece of kit, but of course you get full readout of the decoded CW. <laughs> Obviously it depends how well the person sending CW is actually sending it, but um, you do get very copyable, very readable CW decodes. Tune up and down the band a bit. One of the things you'll notice is the huge variation in loudness as QSB or in fact if you tune to another signal that may be weak, um, you have to turn the volume up to hear it. And then if you tune the band and there's a strong signal and you're not, as I am at the moment, just using this uh, little loudspeaker, but you've got earphones and earbuds in, it'll blow your head off. <laughs> so one of the improvements that I think this uh, little device could do with is uh, an automatic gain control to try and reduce that tendency for fading. That you can hear at the moment. And <clears throat> of course, there is such a module. And this is it. So I thought today what we might do is install the module together <laughs> and you can uh, you can have a look inside the uh, the device. Um, I won't go through absolutely everything but um, I think it might be quite interesting. I'll also explain uh, the issues that I had in, in building. Well, not so much building um, but in aligning the uh, QCX Mini because um, there's not a lot of space inside as you'll find when I take it apart. Um, but the first task we're going to do is we're going to install this AGC module. So let's take it out of its bag. I 
have to be a bit sacrificial with this bag, I'm afraid, because uh, there we go. <coughs> There's the module. Um, and as you can see, it's not exactly huge. <laughs> Uh, it mounts to a position already um, sorted on the main printed circuit board and perhaps we'll we'll have a quick look first to see how that looks um, and explain a little bit about um, how that is supposed to work so this is a direct conversion transceiver so let's just talk a bit about the receiver path so you come out of the antenna, essentially, into a quadrature detector, this device here. This is then split into two channels, I and Q. I don't know whether that's actually the right way around, whether it's Q and I or I and Q. <laughs> Amplification is provided, and, and, and this is all done in the audio passband. So we, we have no IF as such, this is, this is all audio. So the only chance you have to control the gain after the filters is to control the audio levels. And essentially that's what the AGC system does. Um, it essentially provides an additional volume control, um, but automatically derived from some settings that you create. And it essentially shunts the um, volume control that exists on the front panel of this little transceiver. So here's the volume control of the uh, of the transceiver. And the AGC module, this little fella, has an FET that essentially does the same as the volume control. It, it shunts the volume control so all of the AGC is audio derived with this uh, little device. So essentially what you have here, you have input audio, um, you have a bit of a doubler limiter here, uh, a bit for presetting the uh, bias stage of the FET. This FET here controls whether the unit is on or not. Um, and this can be controlled from a setting in the uh, QCX. I think you need a particular um, revision version, I think 1.8, which is what this one is, in order to have that control. Um, but uh, once you have it, you can automatically do it. Um, for older QCX units, uh, you can set it to be AGC on all the time, uh, and that will be fine. And then this FET here is essentially the thing that shunts the audio out of the way uh, when you want to control the volume. And that's what you're doing. You're remotely controlling the volume using signals that are controlled, that have come in here, been detected, rectified, etc., etc. And there is an adjustment control uh, which enables you to adjust the the way the AGC works, uh, because if you have it operate too rapidly or too slowly, um, then the effect is not going to be great. I mean, if it operates too rapidly, you could get thumps and pumps. If it happens too slowly, um, you could already be deaf by the time the AGC operates on, the, uh, on the, the headphones that you've got plugged into your ears, as it were. Um, installation is, is quite straightforward. It's already um, available for us to install on the existing uh, printed circuit board. In this case, I don't think we need to do any cutting of tracks or anything like that. I think it's a pretty straightforward installation. Um, here's where the tiny board is installed. Um, and it, it is tiny. <laughs> uh, as I've shown you before, this is where it's installed. Um, and, and that's physically what it looks like. So this is the board installed tucked down here uh, between the various elements of the, uh, of the receive chain. It, it is really a superb little transceiver for those of you attempting to learn CW. Um, the CW journey is quite a long one. I've been <laughs> learning it for ooh, 55 years plus now, and, and I'm still not brilliant at it. So it is absolutely wonderful to have a pretty reliable 
CW decoder built into this tiny rig. And bearing in mind this rig costs around 50 UK pounds, um, a bit more in dollars, or not much more these days, uh, a little bit more in euros, but 55 UK pounds, uh, I think, is the, is the price. And um, for that, you get not only a superb little uh, 3 to 5 watt transceiver, but you get a receiver that is so full of features as to be really quite amazing. Right, I'm going to turn it off now, unplug it, and start taking bits and pieces of it apart. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed part one of the two-part exploration into AGC for the OCX transceivers. Part two will be along shortly. I'll wish you 73s, and I hope you have a great day. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.